it's engine install time, I guess. So first things first, we need to cut some footage of us reinforcing the subframe and throwing that in the car. started on the what we're doing. Uh, a couple weeks ago Cam and I actually went to a local junkyard and sourced an entire NB front end like uh, subframe which is this one, upper lower control arms, steering rack and the front knuckles which you need all of it to front subframe swap a Miata. Uh, the benefit is the steering rack is better or I guess the steering rack angle is higher up on the subframe so when you go lower your angles, your Ackerman angles aren't all screwed up. That's what this is. That's why it's crusty because it's from a New York car. Uh, sadly, we don't have nice rust-free things up here. Uh, but what we're gonna do today is weld on these Mazda Speed reinforcement plates, which just kind of go like that. It's not coming on street cars, but on track cars or heavily tracked cars, this joint here will actually crack. And this is what holds your the front part of your lower control arm on. So all of a sudden you'll have, uh, what do you want to call it, adaptive camber. So this is a cheap way, they're 40 bucks for the set. Uh, it's cheap insurance, you just put it on there, it's sold by Mazda, they literally like, that's fixed, it's super nice. Uh, and you just weld around it and that's really cheap insurance for uh, swapping these out. Subframes aren't expensive, but uh, I don't know about you, but I don't like doing track side subframe swaps. So for 40 bucks, might as well. That's it. Definitely would have been faster with a MIG. Uh, I don't have a MIG, so it uh, looks better, just takes a lot longer. So there's no way these are going to break now. If these break, something else is very broken uh, and the car is probably out of commission. The next step for this is going to be, uh, it's going to get sandblasted and maybe powder coated. I'm not expecting a perfect finish. This is very pitted. Uh, worst case, we'll just PUR15 it and slap it all back together. One eternity later. So here's the subframe you just saw us reinforce. Uh, I sandblasted part of it, got lazy, and just POR15 the rest. So it actually looks pretty mint. Not gonna complain. It was a really rusty pile of parts when we took it out from the junkyard. We are, before we put this in the car, we are going to install the steering rack just because it's easiest. Uh, and then we'll kind of lift that whole thing into the car. And once that's done, we're gonna prep this guy to throw it in. So the rack is installed. Uh, don't mind that that's pointing down. Uh, I did get some POR15 in the bolt holes, so I did have to go through and chase everything out. This is ready. Um, and let me show you what we did to the shell uh, that we didn't film. This, you guys obviously saw two weeks ago. Um, this is new. So yesterday I taped everything off. It looked like Dexter in here. If you follow us on Instagram, you definitely saw it. Uh, and then undercoated all of this. So this is like Rust-Oleum bed liner. Uh, one thick coat is all it took. And honestly, it looks sick. It's super clean. We're gonna do the rear end later uh, once we get to the back end stuff, but 
this is all ready. Uh, Dylan sprayed this all black a couple weeks ago. So everything down here is nice and clean. Honestly, way too clean for a track car, uh, <laughs> but we're gonna roll with it, so. Ignore the gloved fuel lines, but that looks pretty dang good if I say so myself, especially for a track car. Uh, not to be that guy, but I've seen street cars that do not look this clean, so. <laughs> Uh, bear in mind, it is PR15, but... It was right there, engine bay wise. <laughs> but yeah, this looks pretty dang good. Uh, to address it, this has been in an accident, apparently. We found that out while we were taking it apart. You can see all this is like weirdly crushed in, but everything from here back is the same. So the only thing it changes would be like headlight mounting, which we're not going to have headlights. And it's a little weird on the uh, radiator bracket, but I guess we fixed it. Uh, took care of that in a way, so we're good to go, and we're not worried about it because it is a track car. Mm -hmm. uh, next thing, we are gonna take that off the stand and do the rear main seal, flywheel clutch, and put the six feet on it and get that snaked in the car. So Dylan behind me was nice enough to donate his uh, six puck. It's a HD heavy duty whatever ACT setup. Uh, it's too much for his car or for what he likes to drive. So he's switching when we do whatever's going into his car. And we're gonna throw this in the track car, which is definitely overkill, but whatever. So might <laughs> yeah. as well use what we've got. Don't have to buy a new clutch, so why? Yeah, exactly. right, so we'll just pull this Johnny up here. I already cleaned all the faces and everything. And uh, we'll get to it. So the clutch flywheel pressure plate job's on. Uh, the trans is together. If you're wondering why it's got so many holes, it is the old one from the case swap. Uh, it's fine. It's a track car, so I put it back to stock me out of status. We're gonna throw it up on there, and then this engine's gonna be ready to go in the car. The six speed is on. We did end up doing some beautiful RTV welding to cover those holes up. I don't want to drop a bolt in there and like ruin a track day. So this is all set to go. Uh, we're ready to put it in the car. So yeah, we're gonna time lapse putting it in the car. Uh, hopefully, it goes pretty easy. It is in, as you saw. Uh, we are, you'll see in the future why we're now using chains instead of ratchet straps to pull in yeah. place engines, but we'll talk about that in a later episode. That over there. So this is all in, the AWR engine mounts are looking schnazzy down there on both sides. We got the uh, cobalt reroute coming in, which is gonna look great, plugged into our radiator. Uh, this is 99% done, anything else like the covers and whatnot, we're gonna do when it's in the car. So now it's time to, off camera, we're probably gonna put some of the stuff back together. And then I'm thinking probably rear subframe stuff, put the back end together, that way we can do uh, drive shaft differential. And right now the back of this is actually supported by uh, uh, a <laughs> jack. jack, so. A little precarious. But this is how it'll sit. And if you notice the uh, engine sits very low and that's because these are lowering engine mounts. So this will give us lower CG and all sorts of stuff like that, which is great on track. And yeah, that's a wrap. So let me know what you guys are gonna buy during Black Friday and make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next Wednesday. Actually, yeah, whatever. Okay, let's go.